free fetal DNA. And typically, the cell-free fetal DNA is done at 10 weeks onwards. Now you might ask, why not 7 weeks? Why not 7 weeks? The question, the, uh, the answer to that question might be that, you know, very difficult, there's nothing, no uh, nuclear fold detection at 7 weeks, okay? It's not even a little human form. But the blood takes the cell-free fetal DNA. So ideally it's done at 10 weeks and sometimes, you know, like you might defer the new, because at uh, 10 weeks, the only thing that's required by these, um, these uh, tests is the CRL. So the CRL depending on the uh, uh, last menstrual period or the CRL depending on the ultrasound. So you can uh, defer your first trimester scanning until 12, 13 weeks when you get a broader picture of the, the normalities. <coughs> Triple test and quad, these are done 15 to 20 weeks. And uh, CVS starts at 10 weeks. Amniocentesis starts at 15 weeks. And again, my colleague will be able to tell you details when I refer my patient to him. Okay, now, all the biomarkers I'll touch because when we talk about high-end NIPT, we forget about these. But these are equally important in the life of an obstetrician and the patient. So characteristic advantages, disadvantages of common screening test for an employee. Now, if you see, that the, um, the top is the risk factor, bio, biomarker, gestational age. At the age of 35 and more, the sensitivity to these markers, and I'll tell you the markers, what are the markers, is about 30%. Okay, 5% screen positive. Specificity is in 1 in 100. Detection rate is 30 to 50, so it's very, very little. And false positive rate is high, 40, 48 to 55%. You take the age only. Now, if you go for the first trimester assessment, which includes the blood test, um, um, HCG and PAP, and the uh, fetal ultrasound for the NT. This is done at 11 to 14 weeks. Sensitivity goes up 87 to 89. Five uh, screen positive, specificity is is 1 in 25. So it's not so, it's not, the specific is low. The detection rate is good, 79 to 90 percent, but then we have a false, po a false positive rate of 5 to 9 percent. That means that you might subject that 5 to 9 percent to an invasive procedure of CVS or immunity. So this is the second trimester screen, which is the same, you know, it doesn't give much uh, improvement on the detection or on the false positive rate. So now this one, this is what I'm talking about and the rest of my lecture will be focused on this dynamic test. So this is cell-free DNA and it is done 10 weeks onwards until term. Sensitivity is 92.6 to 100%. Specific, 97 point, that is 98% to nearly 100%. And you see most of the people, that's researchers that have done those things, I mean, they were very impressed. And to be honest, in fact, some of them even call it a non-invasive prenatal diagnosis not non-invasive uh, screening test. Okay, that's why you don't see any detection rates, you don't see anything. So this is the person I uh, told you about, Dennis Liu. I met him in uh, Singapore. He, I think now he's about 46. When he did all his discovery, he was about 36, 37 years old. He graduated from Cambridge, did PhD, in uh, chemical pathology from University 
University, Oxford. Then he went to the US to broaden his vision on what he wanted. Because we all know that in the US, you have a wider field of anything you want to do, so long you want to do and put it. So, and then he got the first ever life science prize, which is equivalent to the Nobel Prize for developing tests for Down syndrome in fetus in China. He used the next, uh, there are, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll just read this. this used, he used the next generation sequencing, which is called MPSS, and in 2012, other researchers built on further work by who sequence the entire genome of fetus, non initially So when they do that, you get many, many other um, uh, disorders, right? Like <coughs> RH phenotype, like you know thalassemia carrier, and many others. And in recent days, when he went, when he showed his paper in the Royal College in Singapore, he is working on cancer cell-free DNA of cancer cells in the fetus. But then he says that should it be, is it right that I'm doing, that telling the parents 40 years before that your child might develop some cancer. So is it ethical? So there is a big ethical issue. Okay, so, okay. Next generation NIPT using cell-free DNA. They have two types of lab processing. One is the massively parallel shotgun sequencing and counting. This one is extensive. They count the total genome. For the, if you say for T21 or T13 or T18, which are the common ones, right? And it is time consuming, but luckily they produce the same report in two weeks time. And then the second one is the targeting uh, sequencing, which is they target the specific genomes. Specific in T21, T18, T13, or whatever, T7, T16, okay? They target those genomes, okay? And if there is possibility of microdivision, they target, you know, genomes that, that can have the microdivided part of the, uh, the genes. Okay, so they compare the two. Both can be done, okay? Uh, they, okay, this, uh, um, they reported as positive or negative, and uh, CQNM can, there, there are three laboratories that is very popular and renowned, and of course they have their own laboratory in Singapore and Taiwan and Hong Kong. So the chromosome tested with the MPSS, 21-18-13-XXXY, XXY, XSY, I mean the uh, sex chromosome and poly. Okay, and the very nature also does the same. And Rio does only 21, 18, 13. With the targeting sequencing, uh, the sample they are able to do multi multi fetal gestation, that is multiple pregnancy. Uh, most probably by first by identif identifying the cell-free DNA of the fetus in the maternal blood uh, and then uh, do the sequencing. But it might be easier if it is a monocytotic twin because they will be sharing the same DNA, okay? So if you find a DNA and you know many DNAs have the same and you have been reported that this is, uh, because at 10 weeks you can see that there is dichorionic or diamniotic. And that takes it there, so they are able, but until now it is not validated. They also accept egg don donors and surrogates, okay? And their turnaround turn time is the same as the MPSS. Uh, they are all between 8 to 10 days. And in our um, center, we have uh, our accounts, so we get the uh, results on our screens within seven to ten days. Okay. Sometimes, of course, it takes longer, and I will explain to you why. 
So what does this test, I mean, for what, what we are looking for? As I said, we are looking for an, an autosomal an employee, which is T21, 13, 18, and many others. Sex chromosome an employee, like fan patches, Turner syndrome, XO. Then micro deletions, which is the absence of a small portion of genetic material in a chromosome. And then fetal sex determination. In our center, you know, that is one of the charts of the, though there are a lot of ethical issues might be in India, we are not allowed to know the fetal sex, okay? But in our center, that's an extra charm. People come to do it, and they will always request, most of the time, the sex determination. Okay, now this is the American College, and American College of Medical Genetics screen, uh, screening pathway. As I said, that we don't leave anything behind, run to this high tech. The first trimester risk assessment, the age history, and the two tests that we do is the ultrasound, see the nuchal fold, and the double test, which takes HCG and PAP. So if this is, then they divide into four to three groups, very high risk, very high risk, okay? Here I'll tell you what they do. Then this one is an intermediate risk, okay? This one, you know, we get. But high risk, we get, but not as often as this group. And this is the low risk. So if somebody is high risk, very high risk, the patient, the lady will go to the invasive test. Of course, you know, there is pre-counseling and all the things, you know, what you do, what you test for, what happens post-test, everything, right? Then only then, because you don't go for, at least CFF DNA, okay, testing. And then if it's positive, I mean, they are reported as positive or negative, detected or non-detected. Because this is the, like Harmony detects as po uh, positive or negative, and uh, very later uh, refers to as detected or non-detected. So if it's non-detected, it goes to the low risk group, and then go for no further testing, reassurance, and the counseling, okay? It's just go away for a low risk uh, pregnancy. But this one, the high risk, obviously will go for an IPT positive, goes, becomes a high risk, goes to the MU. So this goes to the MU, and this goes to the MU, the MU or CBS, okay? Now, Counseling patients about the options. What should you counsel? Patient might say even, really, I don't want to counsel. You know, some patients, they don't even want the double test to be done, or they decline even fetal uh, nuclear force. So counseling is very, very important, because it's her body and her baby. So counseling regarding limitations of the test. Now, I'll tell you what, later, the next slide will tell that. And counseling that NIPT assesses risk of chromosomal and genetic disorder. What you do then? Then cell-free DNA is a screening test. Until now, we are not able to tell people that this is a diagnostic test. Because if it's positive, it has to have an invasive test, which has a detection rate of 98 or even 99%. It is imperative, so, a uh, diagnostic test is recommended if, as I said, it is imperative that practicing OBGYN or other healthcare professional has a firm knowledge of benefits, limitations, and risk of offering a specific genetic test, as well as the importance of appropriate post-test counseling. So we have to know what we are talking to, 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 to the lady in front of me, counseling, what it is, what it will bring to you, are you ready to accept the, you know, an abnormal fetus, what do you do? Is it that just you want to know for peace of mind, and then your other siblings, you tell them that this baby is coming, is a little different from you guys, so there's no bullying, there's no, you know, dis dismay, so you carry on, or you go for determination. So these two are the most important thing for this, for Okay, counseling, 
Then we go to indication for considering use of cell-free DNA analysis for fetal and early. This is from the American College and the American College of Medical Genesis. And I'm sure this is also now addressing the World College. Maternal, any mother above the, uh, 35 and above at delivery. You see, sometimes we make mistake. How old are you? 34. 34 plus? Yes, 34 plus. So what we have to know when she delivers, if that time she is 35, then she falls in this position. And fetal ultrasonic graphic findings indicating an increased risk of an employee. We know the increased um, nuclear folds. We know that uh, the, nas the nose, the characteristic of the heart defect. Then, then personal or family history of a prior pregnancy with a trisomy, okay, there can be family history. I have currently a patient, but how if you went, had four, and one is just a current, two or three days ago, and she was, she had her uh, uh, investigation in the US, and her husband has a balanced translocation seven and 13. So that was the reason for her miscarriage. She was advised strongly against going into spontaneous conception, but she can go for PGED, the pre, uh, implanted diagnosis, and IVF. Okay, so I mean, these are so important. I've seen the lady, in fact, yesterday. But then, this is for the woman that's five and over, right? But what happens to this little girl? Because we know that most of the Down syndrome, most of the women pregnant are younger women, right? But the individual risk of a woman is when they are older. So, so most of the Down syndromes are coming from younger women. Okay? So is there a way of doing something, you know, without any history, family history or past history or anything. Okay? So but now I'm <coughs> sure I'll be able to um, um, ch to change my thoughts like when I, now when I see that anybody having miscarriages, no life life births say four, three, four, five, six, I think that these women should be, whatever the age, whatever, these women should be offered the high-end NFPT. So how does prenatal screening differ in multi-fetal gestation? But I've shown you previously in my previous slide that there is one company using, using the target sequencing that they are ready to accept um, uh, multiple gestation, but twins only, not triplets, not any higher order pregnancies. So, but until then, the, we have to say that accuracy of screening for an employee is limited in multiple gestation. With any method based on maternal blood, the serum analysis or DNA, only a single composite result for the entire gestation is provided, with no ability to distinguish the differential risk between fetuses. The data regarding performance of cell-free DNA screening in gestations is also limited. All the preliminary findings suggest that this screening is accurate. Larger prospective studies are required to establish a firm, firm, firm recommendation. Okay, this is how the, you know, our lab uh, draws the blood. So this is the woman, okay, the blood. It's about 10 or 20 minutes of blood. This is for the DNA extraction. Then it goes to the lab for the, the, to the library construction, sequencing, and analysis. So this is the main part. Okay? Can uh, error happen here? It can, right? That's why we say even if a center says 99.9%, there might be an error. Okay? Then it goes to the physician, like I'm sitting on my desk and looking at the computer. And then I find the test. You call the lady. Oh. We call them as soon as possible, as soon as we see the test. Because, you know, it is a tremendous uh, amount of burden on a woman who is going doing this and you have to wait for seven to ten days. And here is the counseling. Obviously, if it is negative, they are smiling, thanking, and going home. If it's positive, 
then obviously you know has to be referred to for an invasive procedure. So as I said previously, we, uh, some of them re referred to as low risk, that means unlikely the pregnancy is affected, high risk, likely the pregnancy at risk of an unemployee, and some of them report unemployee not detected, unemployee detected. And another very important, uh, this, uh, important uh, uh, notification is the test uninterpretable or indeterminate. In this group of patients, don't take it for granted that there's something you know, wrong with the blood sample or resending. No. Resending will take you know, more time. Here you need to do further genetic counseling, get the history, see the age, past history, you know, do the paratyping, and offer comprehensive sonographic evaluation. Because as I said, in ultrasound also there are biomarkers in the heart, uh, eco like ecogenic bowel, <coughs> ecogenic shadow in the heart, short femur. I mean, these are these are the things that you are looking for, and a diagnostic testing, which is a uh, MNU or CPS. Some might say that there is no result, and we get, especially in hot summer, when the blood gets hemolyzed before they reach the center. Then they come back, but now they have doubled up. Um, last year we had suffered a lot, but then now they developed you know, ice packs that they are kept in the ice pack for uh, before they are transported, and then obviously the DHL, DHL, maybe in the first class, maybe goes to US or to the UK. So who can have the NIPT? I've told you the the indications. The patient has to be 10 weeks pregnant and more. The patient must have been counseled. Single to or twin pregnancy. Let's now just keep on the single term area, not this one. This one we need more, more, more studies. Then the presence of the prenatal screen is unsuitable if the patient has cancer. Herself, she's a trisomy. Blood transfusion in the past 12 months undergone stem cell therapy or immunotherapy or received an organ transplant. So this is the, these are the patients that during counseling we find out and we have to say no to this group of patients. Uh, I didn't get too many of the studies but I want to to you know touch base of this test. This is one of the tests which was um, I think Nicolides is here also somewhere, yes. This was his, he and his uh, group did this one and they found that, see, they are 21, trisomy 21, as I showed you in the slide before, 99.3%, specificity is 99.8, age 25 years, the positive predictive value is 33. And for an older, older woman, age 40, it is 87. So it, that hits the mark. And with a 33%, you know, I still feel that is a bit high. For trisomy 18, similar figures. With age, it incre increases the positive predictive value. Then sex chromosomes, you get it in the region of 100% specificity and the detection rate is must be 100%. Some actually now 